What do you do when you have a beautiful model with amazing makeup in front of your camera and you want to produce a shot that is truly special and it's just not coming together? The lighting is bland, the camera angles are bland, the sweat is starting to beat up on your forehead? Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Hey gang, my name is Joe Edelman and my mission is to help photographers like you to develop a solid understanding of the hows and whys behind great photography so that you can achieve your goals as a photographer. <laughs> that would be one way to deal with it, but that's not the solution that I chose. I like to save my alcohol for when I read the comments on my videos. This is a fashion portrait shoot that I did to illustrate some techniques for some upcoming lectures and workshops. Again, the real credit for this one goes to my makeup artist. Not only did she create an awesome makeup look, but she did it on herself and modeled it as well. Believe me, doing makeup like this on your own face is 10 times harder than doing it on somebody else. It's the makeup artist equivalent of a self-portrait, only the self-portrait it's a lot easier to do. My original concept for this shot was to do something very low key, so it would be all about the makeup. I had one 320 watt second strobe mounted in a 16 by 52 and a half inch strip softbox set on camera left. I draped a black fur collar from a winter coat around Monet's shoulders so that I would have a little texture in the bottom of the frame and would not have a floating head. Now I know some of you will immediately say, you need separation from the background. <laughs> you know what? That's a bunch of crap. Let's be clear that there is no rule that says you have to have separation. Sometimes it makes a huge difference and it looks great. Others, not so much. In both cases, it is a matter of preference. In this case, I'm fine with the lack of separation, but I'm just not excited by the shot. While I love simple, this was just too simple. I go to something safe, something I've done before. Something that I know will usually please people. Notice, I didn't say please me. I simply mean people will look at it and like it. But going back to this safe place lets me clear my head and begin to make some positive progress and start looking for a better idea. So my next step was to add some colored gels. I added two different colored magenta gels to a set of 320 watt second strobes placed about five feet behind Monet and on either side of her to create the pink rim lighting. But I still wasn't very excited with the result. Next, I moved the softbox to a horizontal position above the camera and slightly to camera left and decided I'd get a little crazy by adding some LumaPro LP180R speed lights with gels behind Monet and aimed directly into the camera lens. I also decided to ditch the fur collar and added some black tool with sparkles around her neck just to put a bit more texture into the shot. Here are the original files as I added a speed light, adjusted the exposure, and stopped down my lens to f9 so that I would start to get the rays of light from the strobes. I tried some various angles and power settings and was getting some interesting results, but I still wasn't getting the wow response in my gut that I was looking for. Now I was getting a little desperate. My model slash makeup artist had done an incredible job with her makeup, and I didn't want to disappoint on my end. So I began experimenting with placing the black tool material in front of Monet between her and the camera. This was getting some interesting results, but I wasn't ultimately thrilled with having the texture of the material over her face. Next, I remembered a shot that I had done years ago where I placed a beauty dish high above my camera and placed the camera high above the model and told her to strain her neck looking up to the camera. I decided to try a similar concept, still using the strip softbox, but placing it high and in front of Monet with my camera just below the softbox. Next, I added another 320 watt second strobe on the floor behind Monet with a teal gel to create the glow that you see here. And this is where the magic started to happen. Since I'm using the Interfit Honey Badgers with their LED modeling lights that have a proportional output, I was really loving the soft feeling that I was getting while looking through the wide open lens. So I decided to turn off my flash trigger and I began shooting with the light from the daylight balanced LED modeling lamps. At this point, I knew I had my lighting and I loved the shallow depth of field I was getting. Something you'll rarely hear me say in a studio, but more about that in a few minutes. After all that experimenting, my final shot wound up being lit by the 60 watt LED modeling lamp from the Honey Badger placed in a medium half dome softbox from Photoflex. Monet is seated on a posing stool about eight feet in front of a black savage seamless paper background. And behind her, I have two more Honey Badgers mounted one on either side and above. 
both with magenta gels in place to create the rim lighting. I have one more Honey Badger mounted on a baby pin floor stand with a seven inch reflector and a teal gel that is set about three feet in front of the background and aimed up so that the hot spot is directly behind her head. For my last few frames, I held a white Walmart reflector just under Monet's face and just out of camera range for a little more fill in her eyes. I'm shooting from a Benro carbon fiber tripod with an Acrotec ball head mounted on top. This makeup design is very symmetrical and also very difficult for a makeup artist to get perfect especially when they're doing it on themselves. So from the beginning, I had intended to do a slight turn of her face to mask any inconsistencies. In my previous video, there was also very symmetrical makeup, but it was a makeup artist putting makeup on a model, so there was less to hide, and I was able to photograph her straight on. I knew that I would be shooting close up, and I wanted the shot to be all about the makeup, so I didn't really pose her at all. I just asked her to sit relaxed, and I worked with the angles of her face. The important thing that I had to watch for with a slight head turn is her ear. You can see here that if I only turn the head a little, I have a piece of her ear growing out of her head, right in the same plane as her eyes. Now this is totally natural, but it is still a distraction. I can get the same shot by being careful to turn her head up to the point where I would see the ear, but still hide the ear. This way there's no distraction and more attention remains with the eyes. The shot was made with an Olympus EM-1 Mark II and the 45mm f1.2 Pro Lens, which is a 90mm full frame equivalent. The ISO was 200, which is the base ISO for the Mark II, and the shutter speed 1 50th of a second and the aperture was set at f1.2, wide open. I was shooting tethered with the Tether Tools Tether Block and Tether Pro extension cables and using the Olympus Capture software to manage the camera and downloads. The final image required a bit more post-production than usual. The basics of course, color, contrast, sharpening, and removal of blemishes. But since Monet actually did this makeup on herself, it was my job to help clean up the details a little bit. It's a situation where if you look at the original shot, at first pass it looks wow. But then the longer you look at it, you start to see the few imperfections. So you spend the time and you clean that up in post. Now you could do this shot with strobes or speed lights and fake the shallow depth of field in post-production. In fact, I would actually encourage you to do that instead of shooting wide open in the studio, unless you are very diligent about knowing how much depth of field you have to work with and keeping both eyes in focus. So what is the best course of action when things aren't going the way you want them to? Keep going. Be honest with yourself. If you need a little break to get your head clear, take one. You can do like I did and go back to something you've done before just to be able to clear your head. But whatever you do, keep going. There are two big mistakes that I see photographers make when things aren't going well. The first one is I see them give up and settle for a shot that they know simply sucks. Why would you give up? What do you learn from doing that? The second mistake that I see happen is the photographer puts the camera down and steps back and surveys the scene. The problem with that is your brain is having to process all of this information that is in front of you, not just the part that you're trying to photograph. Plus, while you're standing there, your model is realizing that you have no idea what to do. The best course of action is to put the camera back up to your eye and keep taking pictures. This way, you're looking at a picture. We already established it's a bad picture but it will be much easier for you to evaluate what exactly is wrong while you're looking through the viewfinder and you'll be able to figure out what needs to be changed. And you're keeping your model happy because he or she is hearing click, click, click. And I promise you, your model would much rather hear click, click, click than something like, oh baby, that's hot. But the bottom line is you have to keep shooting. Work the shot, try things, even things that may seem ridiculous. Your model will always respect your effort. You will learn lots of new things and your photography will head in directions that you hadn't previously imagined. Generally speaking, there's no reason to shoot wide open in a studio when you're creating a portrait or fashion portrait like this one. If you've watched many of my videos, you know that I usually shoot between 5.6 and 8 for my studio work. And if I want the feeling of shallow depth of field by having my subject's ears or shoulders slightly soft, I'll create that in Photoshop. I shoot at 5.6 or 8 so that I don't have to be concerned with depth of field and so that I can tell my subject to turn their head and not have to worry on each frame if I have both eyes in sharp focus. It's not a rule, it's my practice. Just like having separation from the background isn't a rule. 
But if you're going to shoot wide open, pay close attention to what is in and out of focus. In the case of this shot, shooting wide open wouldn't have made much sense if I didn't have the material draped over her head. The shallow depth of field, along with the sparkles in the material, combined to create the dreamy bokeh. Hey, I hope this gives you some ideas. Take this idea and run with it. Go create and show me what you come up with. Until next time, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. And go pick up that camera and shoot something because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.